Hello fellow pilots, I'm Major Payne and this is next episode of Advanced Fighter Pilot Training. In this episode we will focus on fighter dogfights, in other words one-on-one -on -one clash between two fighters. We will discuss the initial dogfight and available maneuvers in our game. Let's start with four most important factors that define fighters and their effectiveness and these are maneuverability, speed, firepower and altitude performance. On top of that, we have to clearly say that the world of warplanes is not a simulation. It has slightly simplified physics, like G-Force does not act on the structure of the aircraft or the pilot, which means that plane cannot break apart during the sudden maneuvers at high speed and the pilot won't get blackout after going over 9G. Just like it happens in another more kind of simulation games like War Thunder. Each game has its rules and everything depends on who like what, we will not go into details, but uh, I will just say that the uh, advantage of the World of Warplanes is a lot of more dynamics and a lot of fun and easy to learn. This game is easy to learn. We don't die from one shot usually and we can enter the battle several times. A uh, completely realistic game can also be annoying, like if you fly from the airport, uh, you fly a long time and then one single bullet hit your pilot and it's game over. Like. Uh, you can fly to the hangar at best, you know, so uh, rage can hit you the same as a single bullet hit your pilot, so uh, pluses are that uh, shooting down one plane in such a conditions uh, give you as much excitement as shooting down 10 planes in World of Warplanes. But let's get back to the topic. Um, before we get into the dogfights, um, let's establish a few facts about World of Warplanes to make it easier for us to understand the rest of the video. First thing is that maneuverability of the aircraft, which is beyond his optimal altitude, uh, make the turn time longer. So keep that in mind, if you are not in your optimum altitude, then your turning time is gonna increase. Just like you see on this training test here, and the plane, which is over two and a half thousand meters, which is not his optimum altitude, make a turn in over 10 seconds and the same plane in his optimum altitude uh, did the same turn 360 degrees in a little bit over eight seconds. Second, speed matters as well. Optimum minimum speed and optimum maximum speed are very important. We have these data in a hangar and beyond these limits our turning time increase also, so keep that on mind. Third important fact is that the turn time of 360 degree turn at maximum optimum speed and 360 degree turn at minimum optimum speed are practically in the same time. So the only difference is in radius. So it's Time of the turn is the same, but radius is smaller or bigger, it depends how fast you go. Now we have it clear, so let's move into our dogfight. We start with the situation where two fighters meet in a battle. If one of the plane is not aware of the enemy present, then we have a surprise attack. And the defending plane, if realized in time that he's been a target, he can perform various maneuvers, various defensive maneuvers, uh, to avoid the attacker. Uh, whatever he succeed often depends on when he realizes uh, that he is under attack. So all available maneuvers uh, we will discuss and I will show them uh, in a later part of the video. But now we are focusing on situation where both fighters are aware of each other, a uh, typical 1vs1. So when two planes are flying towards each other at the same altitude, it starts with head-on attack. In such a clash, firepower and HP pool are the most important. So if they both stay in this head-on attack, theoretically the one who have more firepower and HP pool should win. If none of the planes get killed in head-on attack and they don't ram each other, and of course they choose to stay in a fight, that results usually in two type of fights. One circle fight and two circle fight. In a two circle fight, uh, both planes turn in the same direction. Enemy turns to the right and we are turning to the right. In such a fight, the turn rate is most important. 
whoever makes the turn faster will get the shooting position. But uh, this kind of struggle also results in greater separation. So an aircraft that has less maneuverability but greater speed and firepower should perform this turn at maximum optimum speed or higher. For example, if you have a G suit. Um, so of course with extended flaps and maximum pitch up button press on and thanks to this he will return to the head-on attack uh, with more agile fighter of course and um, and will have another chance to finish off the opponent who will be flying in reduced speed after just tight turn and will be an easy target um, easier than in, in the initial state of the fight uh, thanks to this separation uh, and the more agile fighter, in this case F-86, um, after he finishes his maneuver, he will have us in crosshair first, but often it will be out of the range of his weapons. In this particular training uh, I had with my friend here, uh, I didn't have this um, high speed actually, so that's why he actually get, uh, get me on his crosshair first and uh, I actually was here in his uh, range so he started firing at me but that was just his uh, maximum range so he didn't cause me too much damage here. I hope I explained the two circle fight well. Uh, of course the difference in turn time cannot be too great just keep that in mind and uh, you also need to have the appropriate keyboard settings, uh, which I explained in one of the previous episodes about keyboard settings, to have possibility of maximum turn and many others. So to have automatic flaps uh, on is not an option because uh, they work after pressing S and this also means uh, reducing engine thrust to zero. So it's impossible uh, to make a quick turn with uh, extended flaps when we have uh, them assigned under the same button as uh, engine thrust reduction, so keep that in mind. Now we are going to one circle fight. In such a fight the turn radius is more important. When we turn in opposite direction to our opponent it results in one circle fight. It may be confusing but we turning left and our opponent turning right. So whoever can make a smaller circle will get shooting position. That's why in this clash low speed is important at the moment that turn starts. Uh, so at lower speed we have smaller turning radius and uh, turning time remains the same as the turning time at high speed within our optimum speed of course. I show you this example on MiG-15 uh, which fighting here F-86 but uh, one circle fight is not for MiG-15. MiG-15 minimum optimum speed is 420 km per hour and F-86 have 300 so he have clearly advantage and he's in general more maneuverable fighter. F-86 is much more maneuverable, he have better turn rate so MiG-15 should never go for this fight but I just want to show you how low speed affect this uh, that even MiG-15 at low speed can have this angle fire angle advantage after first circle. Um, so in general, all fighters which have uh, very low minimum optimum speed and uh, stall speed as well is important. So if you have that low, uh, it's uh, one circle fight is better for you. Uh, specifically, like a uh, maneuverable fighter with this uh, low speed capabilities should go for it. I hope it's a little bit more understandable now. Um, and uh, one more thing here is that... Uh, this type of fight is much more danger uh, for the fighters, so it doesn't leave the way out for the fighter most of the time, so it's really hard to break away from it. So if you get into this fight, uh, you stay in most of the time. So let's move into the next example. I'm here in J7W3, which is Japanese multi-role fighter on tier 10, uh, very maneuverable, and he have 250 minimum optimum speed and 120, which is ridiculous stall speed. And I am here up against Messerschmitt tier 10 light fighter which have 385 km per hour minimum optimum speed and stall speed 200. So I have clear advantage in um, radius fight. And whoever is going to make his turn as last will determine is that going to be one circle fight or two circle fights. So I make my turn for head on attack to use my um, firepower. And um, this, this is actually half of the speed, this replay is in half speed. There you go, that's my um, 
enemy. That's actually a very good player, um, as far as I remember, very very good. But uh, in this case, you see, there you go, making left turn, I'm doing my right turn, and this is fire angle advantage now. Being able to stay in opponent circle gives an advantage, so keep that in mind if you have a uh, fighter which have very low minimum optimum speed or low stall speed you should try to go for a one circle fight. Finally we will look at the vertical fight. We can use this in fighters with good altitude characteristic and high speed. So as you can see in this animation if you are in a red fighter then you accelerate in a frontal attack. If you have more firepower you should take advantage of it. If not then just make a rapid maneuvers to avoid enemy fire but at the same time maintain the general direction of flight and speed. You should also have a large reserve of boost. And after passing the opponent, start climbing in gentle arc uh, to, the, to get the greatest possible separation. Um, and continue climbing when, when watching uh, in the same time enemy to turn around uh, in the right moment and make an attack. Um, so the red fighter will have better energy state but higher radius so that open you up to the attack but you also get the gravity assist when you will be coming back down on the lower fighter now if you are in a blue fighter with advantage in maneuverability if you have also uh, advantage in firepower you should try to use it in head-on attack uh, if not you just avoid enemy fire with sudden maneuvers and start turning in such a moment to get on the enemy tail in the shortest possible distance. You will have a snapshot position thanks to this. But it's not always enough, so it's important for you to recover inner energy on time. That means you need to be able to recognize the situation, uh, to regain your energy and prepare to counter uh, your opponent next time. The worst you can do is just keep following enemy plane until you stall your plane. So when you stall, you became a very easy target. Now uh, I just want to show you the example in battle. As you see, I'm here in uh, BF-109G, tier 7 light fighter, in German tech tree. Now you see, after I pass enemy, I just keep climbing, I use my boost. This is a Japanese tier 7, very maneuverable fighter. And he just disengaged now, as you see. So he regained his energy. And yeah, so that's a good move. He didn't follow me. Now I, I do another attack. He should be ready for that, but um, he was busy with something else. Now there's another fighter coming, um, this time tier 8, a Japanese light fighter, even more danger for me. So you see, I'm in big trouble. I have no boost, um, so I'm a bit, I'm, I'm a bit lucky here. So what I'm doing here. I'm going for um, factory. I'm, so I'm gonna go. If I'm gonna manage, I'm gonna go through this factory because that's what's what's happening here. If we go to our sector, then our air defenses will target enemy. So enemy won't be able to fly in a straight line. So that can give me a more, much more separation. So this is very um, good tactic, just try to fight over your own sector. And you see, AA start fire at enemy and he can't just keep following me in straight line. So what I'm doing now, I'm turning back on him. I have boost now, in 12, 10 seconds left for my uh, engine cooldown. I'm doing defensive maneuver to avoid the fire because he have much more firepower. I am keep climbing now and use my cooldown for engine and then keep climbing I'm keep watching enemy and he's keep following me a little bit more see he's keep firing and now we're turning back it's extremely high altitude now and we got him in his most vulnerable position he just stole his plane and that's it now another fighter is keep coming on us so it just about game is just about to finish, so we uh, allowed ourselves to go this head on, which was really really risky, but uh, it was worth it, and we get the kill. Now, so that's how it's worked basically. We're going to move now into available maneuvers in our game, and we will start from the canopy roll, which is very basic, very easy to do, 
and most common seen in battles. If you have standard settings in a game for your keyboard, just press left roll button and start moving your mouse in small circles to the left. And the same in, in other side, so if you press right roll button, then start doing small circles with your mouse to the right. And if you have assigned buttons for pitch axis, maneuver is even easier. Just press roll button and pitch up and you won't even need your mouse to do that, so it's much easier. And remember that this maneuver is not a great option if you are very close to the enemy, like close combat, below 500 meters, and that won't help too much because enemy will be able to hit you anyway. So try to do the canopy roll only if you are in greater range over 500 meters. And uh, it's particularly for light fighter, but you can also perform that in multi row fighters and even heavy fighters, but as a last resource. Now two next maneuvers would be email man maneuver and inverted email man, which is also called as split S. For those who don't know, the email man was a great ace in First World War. He invented this maneuver and this is how it goes. So you start pulling your plane up and doing like half of the loop and then you just roll until you level off the flight. So by doing this, you trade your speed for altitude. So it could be very useful if you have enemy above you and passing by. So it's an offensive maneuver. Set up your guns higher and against the lower altitude uh, enemy. However, keep in mind that this is not a good defensive maneuver because by doing this maneuver you lose a lot of speed and that make you an easier target. Now we are going for split S, which is inverted email man, and we perform this maneuver by roll 180 degrees and then we make a half of the loop and we exit in level flight. We can use this maneuver when there is a fast flying and low altitude a target, like for example bomber. Uh, I use that pretty often, you can see that even in some of my video that I perform this maneuver to get the low flying bomber and thanks to this maneuver we also gain a lot of speed. So it's very useful and often as well used to disengage from the combat. Next maneuver is called flat scissors, also called horizontal scissors. We start in situation when enemy is approaching. We set ourselves slightly sideways. So when the enemy enter the effective range of his weapons, we turn into the enemy that causes him to overshoot. And the enemy will try to turn back on us to maintain his advantage position. So we roll and we turn into the enemy. So we try to force the attacker to fly out in front of us. It's an energy contest, we keep roll and turn into the enemy. Uh, important parameter of maneuverability of any machine is rate of roll, but specifically for this maneuver, the rate of roll is uh, when it's high will give you an advantage. So playing like, for example, BVP 210 or FW 252, um, they can perform this maneuver quite effectively um, because they have this rate of roll very high. So, of course, stall speed and general maneuverability are also important and the difference must not be too large because then even the highest value of rate of roll won't help you. And the same maneuver can be performed vertically and then we call it like rolling scissors. It's more of the energy contest but in general, the principles are the same. Most often it's happened when the attacker is on greater altitude and he's approaching with higher speed. And remember that these maneuvers I'm trying to present to you, um, this is not something what you can do in every battle. It's very rare to do them, some of them at least, and you need to meet someone good in battle, someone who can do a little bit more than one right circle uh, for half of battle. And of course, plane need to be... Uh, equal or pretty much equal to do those maneuvers or like for the rolling scissors you will need the plane who have very good rate of roll time. Now we can move to another maneuver which is called defensive spiral and we perform this maneuver when we are just about to run out of the speed. Like if we are, if we are already in a dogfight and we fight with enemy and we try to uh, slow down suddenly so he can just pass us and go in front of us or something like that or we just get hit into the engine and our engine is gone and we're just about to stall so we need the extra speed and like there is no other options to another maneuver because of the lack of the speed so we can try to go into this um, it's a kind of 
rolling scissors as well, but straight to the ground. So that's why I placed this maneuver right after the rolling scissors. So you see the here on this example, I just about to stall. So I try to turn this fight into this uh, spiral to the ground. So that's why we call it defensive spiral. And um, it's basically a rolling scissors, which are lead you right to the ground and the best to do it just if you are on a low altitude like here and close to the ground enemy have two options he can stay in a spiral and he can risk hitting the ground or he can try to do the flat turn or whatever else he's gonna figure out but uh, no matter what he's gonna do uh, we have time to restore our boost engine boost and we are in good position to disengage so we have a good chance to disengage from this fight now uh, if the enemy going for a flat turn uh, then or whatever else he's gonna figure out to do he may open himself to an attack so we can use that as well and have a snapshot position on him but of course that's depend what kind of advantage have enemy uh, who have better maneuverability capabilities and so on so if we're sure about our advantage we can stay in the fight but if we don't or we sure we not, we not have an advantage then we should disengage that's the best opportunity here now let's move to another two maneuvers first is stall turn also named hammerhead and another one is wing over and the main difference between them is that uh, hammerhead when we do a hammerhead we actually have to stall the plane uh, in wing over we still control the plane so first i'm going to show you how to perform this maneuver and then i'm going to show you uh, when to perform in battle so we pull up to about 90 degrees now we disconnect the mouse from the mouse pad and uh, we just use the rudder now to the right to make this turn and when we see the nose of the plane then we connect the mouse and in the same moment when you connect we do the sudden move to the right so we can uh, get the camera back on track now we go in for the hammerhead and uh, we need to climb as steep as possible let's say as close as possible to 99 degrees uh, so we do that and watch the speed as well so we can even slow down and pull out the flaps if we need to slow down and uh, we disconnect the mouse and then we use rudder to turn to the right in this case and we stall but in this moment I actually roll to the right that that wasn't perfect but anyway you know what's what is that about so just about stall and do it very tight turn thanks to this stall and remember that in settings you need to assign a yo to the right and yo to the left uh, button I have Z and X to it but you can do whatever you like but without this it's not possible to do this maneuver so you need to have that in your setting first it's funny actually that I show you this maneuver on low altitude but uh, because this is not a maneuver which I perform at low altitude it's just for uh, high altitude fighters which are using the boom and zoom tactics so they fly the high altitude they pick up the target they dive for the target and they disengage then pull up and that's why we call it boom zoom so they just disengage then go up but if the enemy which we just attack decide to pursue it and go after us then we may be in trouble for a while so we're trying to pull up as fast as possible enemy is chasing us and then we can perform this maneuver when we know that enemy cannot keep up with us, he's about to stall. Or enemy just simply just trying to disengage so we can do this maneuver to re-engage to the enemy now. Um, and of, of course, could be happen when we are at the low altitude and there is some other plane um, see us in a vulnerable position and try to attack us. So we try to escape back to the our best altitude and we just keep going up and the enemy chasing us but uh, the enemy plane is not a high altitude fighter so we can keep looking at him and he, when he is about to stall we can perform our turn and get back to him when he's most vulnerable and we can simply shut him down now someone may ask why we just simply not roll over yeah of course you can roll over but um, by doing this you became a big target so quite often like in this case here I've shown you uh, I've been chased by Yak-19 which is tier higher than my Messerschmitt BF-109G so I'm still in range of his fire so that's the thing if you are in the range of enemy fire which that happened quite often uh, then by rolling over uh, you became a big target your, all, all your wings uh, everything is clearly seen so quite often you may get killed when you're doing it 
and the uh, enemy will stall just after that but that's no good for you anymore so that's why I prefer to do the wing over instead of just roll over so you just need to keep looking on enemy so you'll know when he's about to stall that's acquire a lot of experience and knowledge about other planes and in this moment as you see I'm doing this maneuver without disconnecting my mouse from mouse pad uh, it's possible it's just effect with slightly roll to the right in this moment uh, but it's possible we'll do the job if you prefer that um, now you see the enemy here and uh, you will see his stall when his nose slightly moved down which is now so you see wing over can be useful in battle but hammerhead not so much i don't recall i'm using a hammerhead anytime in the battle maybe sometimes accidentally <laughs> but basically hammerhead when you stall you became as well very easy target and we should really try to do that before the enemy stall because if it's after the enemy stall it's often too late we won't be able to use this advantage of enemy stall his plane and we're gonna be there too late and it really doesn't matter what kind of maneuver we're gonna do after the enemy stall because uh, we can roll over we can do the wing over because it's we are not the target and most often it's gonna be too late because uh, enemy will have a chance to recover and prepare himself for another attack from our side. Next maneuver is called high yo-yo and we perform this when we attack the target with high speed and most often from higher altitude and we want to stay in advantage so we rise nose of the plane, we turn as well in this and we use gravity to help us to come down on the enemy again and of course that uh, cause our plane to slow down. So most often uh, I use that against ground attacker uh, instead of just making a turn which can cause me to go in front of the attacking plane I just do the yo-yo so I stay uh, in advantage position and it's actually quite useful in a battle I perform that quite often. And ground attackers cannot actually defend against it but if it's light fighter on high altitude yes he can because he can, if he recognize on time that you are doing high yo-yo, then he can actually dive and he can try to disengage or do another circle and go back to the head-on attack or anything else, but he have a chance. But uh, not in this case, ground attackers cannot defend against it. Another maneuver is low yo-yo. Uh, the whole point of it is just to close the distance to the enemy. Uh, so that's why we're doing that kind of shortcut, we lower the nose and we're doing uh, this shortcut in a circle so we can close into the enemy but simply because the game has so much dynamics and I never, I can't recall any time that I was doing this uh, maneuver so I just place it here because maybe one of you did but uh, I just can't find a place for it in World of Warplanes. Okay, next one is very interesting and very useful. It's called High G Barrel Roll. It's a last ditch defensive maneuver performed when attacker is just behind us and have good position to fire. We make maneuver when attacker is very close, so we perform the barrel roll with maximum slowing down. And the barrel roll because gravity will help us to slow down even faster. That can cause enemy to overshoot at least, or at the very best he will go right on front of us, so it's very useful. Of course name is not the most suitable for it, because in worst World of Warplanes we don't have a G-force. So I heard an, an other names like a stall maneuver or sudden slowing down, uh, whatever you call it, uh, the important in this maneuver is your stall speed and ability to slowing down quickly. At low tier planes, we, they are planes with no flaps and they are planes with flaps. At higher tier they are planes with flaps and some of them even have the air brakes. So, like on this example here, MiG-15 have flaps and air brakes and that give advantage over the Swift which have only flaps. And very important is also stall speed, so whoever have a lower stall speed will have advantage in this maneuver, so keep that on mind. And definitely try this maneuver, well what else you can lose, like you're just about to be shot down, so not much to lose. And now we are going to the last maneuver, or tactic, or both, and it's only available in World of Warplanes. And uh, not like in other games, World of Warplanes have an uh, age of the map where you cannot fly and you're gonna bounce off from it. So you can use that into your advantage. Um, so it's a kind of maneuver you can do, I suppose, to escape or to turn faster. Because as you very well know, when we hit the boundary of the map, then 
we lose control over our plane and it's going to be automatically uh, like turn over 180 degrees I suppose is it. So you see here I'm chasing this heavy fighter but I touch the edge of the map and see what's happened I lose control of my plane but before I get control back you see the heavy fighter managed to escape. So that's the one of example like you can try to use that for escaping and now that's another example I mean this f message mid here so I get into really nasty position like there's good few fighters behind me so I'm dragging them out uh, so I'm going to the edge of the map because I know I'm gonna use that over there if not to win because that's most likely not gonna finish with your win but at least I drag three planes or two planes at the moment behind me so it's give some kind of advantage to my uh, team because two fighters will have to struggle with me um, instead of doing something else like you see it's very easy to get crashed as well because of this because when the game take control over a plane and turn it for you you may be put into position just in front of this uh, uh, mountains or any other obstacles so you see one of the enemy already crashed and I stay with one enemy and I keep bouncing from this uh, boundary here and uh, eventually I get the uh, advantage. But you see, uh, that can be used also when you have some uh, wing damage or anything like that and you just need a little bit more time to get the repair so you can buy yourself a time by uh, hitting this uh, edge of the map and bouncing from it so the enemy will do the same uh, in order to get you. So um, you buy in a little bit time and you can fix whatever you need to fix. So you see, it's uh, not really a maneuver, but it's a part of the game. Uh, so that's why I placed this in this video, and you definitely can use that in a dogfight. So that's the that's why it's here in this video. Okay, time to finish uh, this video with two fun facts. First, the uh, sun in World of Warplanes is not the same as in Top Gun, <laughs> so it's not going to be a problem to get killed if someone uh, fly into sun. Another one is just we can exceed our maximum altitude quite extensively as you see now. Okay, that would be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoy it, found it useful as usually. I try to pick it up the most useful maneuvers in World of Warplanes. Obviously not everything can be uh, done in this game, but uh, and always uh, situation awareness would be uh, most important. So keep that on mind and if you like it, please leave a like and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much and see you guys in the next one.